All right, we'll see how long this lasts. Um, I really don't know. I have no clue. Um, I'm recording on my laptop. I usually like to do these movie reviews at the scene of the crime after I got the movie and then do it from there. But um, this one will unfortunately have to be here at the crib because I tried to um, do it there. I tried to do it at the movies. Um, I got five minutes in, six minutes in, and it just it didn't fucking... Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'm doing it like this. Hopefully it's a lot more um structured than that one. I kinda got overloaded, I will tell you. Um I'm looking up the um the the Instagram uh, Instagram Wikipedia right now of this shit. Um so here I just kinda wanna talk about this backdrop here. Um so after two years of fighting crime, the film, see, I'm going to talk about spoilers, by the way, so it's important how the kind of background and give you my thoughts about it. So after two years of fighting crime, the film sees Batman uncover corruption in Gotham City while pursuing the uh, Riddler, a serial killer who, okay, uh, development begins after, or began, development began after Ben Affleck was cast as Batman in the DCU in 2013. Uh, he signed on to direct, produce, co-write, and star in the Batman this movie was hyped up for fucking years, and it was supposed to pretty much be the backbone, uh, or, or what would save the um, the franchise, really, before we had the uh, Snyder Cut come out, because obviously uh, BVS was not good, and there's no objective way to look at that, except I don't think it's good, and that's the objective way there. Um, he had a reservation about the project and dropped out. After BVS and the, the, the Snyder Cut, or the, the uh, just so that we got, not the Snyder Cut, I think probably pretty safe to have those reservations. Um, Reeves took over and reworked the story, reviewing the DCU connections, sought to explore Batman's detective side in one of the previous films. That's one thing that did happen. Drawing inspiration from 1970s films, 1970s films, another thing that did happen as well. Um, Patson was cast in 2019, and then the pandemic pushed it back. It was supposed to come out last year. June 2021, wow. This film is intended to launch a Batman shared universe with two sequels planned and two spin-off television series and develop HBO Max. I think that's just about everything we need right there, really. Um, so going off of just what Wikipedia just said there, A, this does feel like it's trying to do its own thing that's not DC-related. It's going to be kind of like, I guess, the old Spider-Man uh, for anybody that's thinking, like, this is going to have... Wonder Woman and blah, blah, blah. It's going to be a Batman universe. Pretty much like, um, like the Bale movies. Um, I'm sure it's going to be the Joker eventually. I'll get to that a little bit later. But, um, talking to the, the universe itself, I, I think that having Reeves, who is not a superhero, he's never done superhero shit, uh, kind of had value in this because it did not feel like a superhero movie. It felt like a movie that could connect to the Joker in many ways philosophically. Uh, if you go back to the Joker, there's definitely some themes from there that carried over to here. If you want to look at it from the villain side, uh, I think that the Riddler was feeling. Obviously, with it being a um, hero movie, it has to have good. And um, I think this movie does a, a fantastic job of like drawing the good side to the bad side and making the two almost a gray area. A blend, if you will. I think it does a fantastic job of really writing a neutral. Um, which, if you watch the Joker, that does a pretty fantastic job doing that too. Even at the end, when he's on, you know, Jimmy Kimmel doing what he's doing, even then, I would say it's still you can understand where all this is coming from, right? To some degree, you know, to some degree. I was shooting, shooting uh, Robert De Niro in the fucking face, eh, maybe a little bit much. But um, speaking of Robert De Niro, Taxi Driver. I feel like Taxi Driver uh, inspired this movie heavily. Um, there's probably been a thousand um, pretty much case studies on a, a very malcontent, uh, psychologically challenged individual like Taxi Driver essentially is since Taxi Driver's come out, probably before it too. But this movie, the Joker does a little bit more, but this movie really does feel like, in times, Taxi Driver inspires things. Especially when you look at the societal... A governmental angle that um both movies do feature um it does feel like it right to me to me it feels like a little bit but um 
I thought it was fantastic in the zombie and like it takes some homage from different things. Um I think Pat's supposed to be like he's I think he even had an article about it. He's uh he was influenced by or you know, he looked to Cobain for homage. If you look at the just the way like kind of the makeup, um the the strewn eyes, I'm, I sunken eyes, kind of the gaunt look, um that Bruce Wayne has, the the hair, um almost like the suicidal rock star life that he kind of leads. I mean, he talks about not giving a fuck if he dies multiple times. I mean, it, it you can definitely see the uh, Cobain, especially late stage Cobain in in, uh, in this guy. Um, I'm trying to think about how to best structure this. I don't, I don't want to just keep on rambling. But um, plot, I thought plot was fine. I mean, it's tough, dude. Three hours, it's, it's like two... Give analysis of three hours worth of content. It's just very difficult, I thought. The first act, I, I think it gets into it quickly enough to where you kind of... What really, I think, kills a third hour, uh, a three-hour movie is that, like, what is the middle act like? Is it long-winded? I think one thing that really hurt, um, once upon a time in Hollywood, the middle act just, like, feels like, like, what the fuck is happening? Does any of this matter? And I think in the grand scheme of things, most of the middle act, especially the, um... Love letter to um, the actress that got killed. I forgot. I forgot her name. Um, I think it starts with the S too. But that whole love letter thing, Sharon Tate. That that was not engaging. I I know that Tarantino went a lot of different directions with that with that movie and especially that part. But it just was not engaging. I think here the middle like a big part of it is kind of the co working of um of a uh, Pattinson and Kravitz, which on itself worked particularly well. And you really start getting to the detective part of this. I mean, like, the detective part of that was a jump. I mean, literally the first scene you see Batman is being a detective. Literally the first one. But, um, I think when you really start seeing, like, the, the mystery uh, unravel, I guess. And, uh, you also start seeing how wide-ranging this is. That, there's a lot of value in that. I thought it was interesting. Uh, but I thought the game was fine. I mean, it's brand new, right? So, entirely new universe. You're getting introduced to the Jim Gordons, uh... Bruce Wayne's, whoever the villain's gonna be, and whatever that movie will be, uh, Selena Kyle. I mean, like, and then you're like laying in what this universe is supposed to be. Like, you gotta like literally implement and say, "Hey, this is not dark in the same way that the Snyder DCU is supposed to be dark. This is not edgy. It's, I mean, it's dark, but it's not edgy. You gotta try to um, depict how this Bruce Wayne or this Batman is." In comparison to other ones, because that's just something people's going to wonder about. So, the first act of a movie like this, much less it being a three-hour movie, is going to have to be predicated on a lot of world building. And uh, I think we really take off from that foundation. The middle act is fantastic. I thought the last act was fine too. I mean, the last act really starts feeling like a superhero movie. One compliment I have about this is that like the a good part of this this plot could really be taken and put into just a general contest and feel good. I mean, the mob angle, like, I likened it to the wire in my not-ever-to-be-seen, not-recorded video that I did in the fucking parking lot. But I like it to the wire. Like, when you have Stringer Bell donating to uh, mayoral campaigns, you had a mayoral candidate that got in the pockets of the mob and got fucking put down. Like, that feels like a mob movie that just... Looks to be a little bit more uh, wide ranging and sprawling, right? Um, and they're most like mafia type movies, like they do have money in the po the police force or something like that. But this goes from there to here with with that concept. Uh, that feels like it just could be a movie. And then you have detective angle from between Gordon. Um, uh, you have an end with Selena Kyle. Uh, I mean, like all that feels like almost wire as stuff instead of. Uh, Jimmy McNulty, you have uh, fucking <laughs> Robert Patrick just take a fucking shotgun to the chest like five different times this far. Um, and that's the weirdest thing. Like sometimes the caliber of guns, I guess, would be stronger to where a, a gun actually puts down Robert Patterson. But like the majority of times, he would just eat a shotgun to the chest. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool. How about you? Um, Third Act, I thought Third Act was cool. Third Act is where it feels like a superhero movie. It feels like a movie that's trying to set up other movies. For the most part, at a certain point, I was thinking, because I didn't know that it was going to be like a sequel thing, even though like you don't put as much you put into this movie if you're the DC uh, universe, DC films, and like only 
get one movie out of it. But at a certain point, I thought like this could be just a character piece. Like almost like the Joker could just be the Joker. Like that didn't have to have, or it doesn't have to have a part two. I thought for a while it didn't have to have a part two, but then you start seeing the events kind of go a certain way in the third act, where it's like, okay, this is a foundational movie, uh, which is fine. I just, you know, you kind of, you just have to shift how you're looking at it. And I think this movie has so many different genres it takes from you have to shift how you kind of look at it. I thought it was almost like, you know, a modern uh, noir, uh, I hope I said that right, uh, movie at a, at a certain spot where it's just like, okay, this is like really gritty and, 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 and um, you know, detective-esque. And uh, it felt like a psycho thriller at parts, which I think that uh, really is going to be the thing that most people remember for it. Because that, that whole backdrop of like, you think this guy's good and you think that guy's bad, but you, uh, black and white not existing. Um, I think that's pretty much the, the unifying theme, no matter what genre you is trying to take inspiration from, is that part of it. And then it kind of goes, it has some shots that remind me of like the kind of cheesier superhero movies you'd see, like from fucking Adam West or something like that, where uh, some of these camera shots are just very. They didn't feel 2022-esque. They feel like 1984-esque. Um, but it was tasteful. I mean, like, you see, like, like that, this is what I'm thinking about, is, like, when Bruce, when uh, Batman is jumping out of the um, the police tower and he's, like, riding away. And, like, the way that camera kind of is over his head, kind of close up, um, and how cheap, like, it doesn't feel like, like, you, you watch all these Marvel movies and, like, you see something flying and at this point, like, flying is, like, so it's this glamorous, amazing shit. But like this guy doesn't have flying. He just he's gliding. He has a back glider. And he's just trying to land somewhere safely. But he says a threat of like how do where the fuck do I land? Because he's a human being. And that realism of that shot um just felt yeah, you know, unusual. Cause I mean you see Captain Marvel fucking glowing through space and time. Um Doctor Strange going through space and time. I mean Everybody can fly with these fucking powers they have now, but this motherfucker's just gliding. And returning that realism is something that I think was massively important, uh, coming off the Snyder cut, where it's like boom, 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 and just almost Marvel esque in terms of like the powers being displayed in that. Um making it grounded again, I think was something that they really needed to do well here. I mean, like you didn't even see one, one I you know, some people might not consider cool, I don't know. But one thing that we had here, there wasn't that many amazing Batman machines and gadgets and shit like that. We didn't see like some supercomputer. Uh, I mean, even his abode felt very like real. Like, you could probably see that shit if you go to like a the FBI, your, your local FBI station. Like you just went there and like checked that shit out. That that felt like something that's technologically not advanced as like a normal FBI station or some shit like that. Maybe a police station. I don't know. But um, it didn't feel like a super billionaire type thing. It didn't feel like someone who was, you know, operating in an impossible level. I mean, hell, even uh, intellectually, like he is smarter than detectives, but a lot of times the detectives are feeding, or it's Gordon more than anything, but are filling in holes in his kind of rationale or... um. Alfred is helping him with his uh, scrambling, um, or even, I mean, even at the end, like he doesn't have the ultimate answer. Like he gets spoon fed the ultimate conclusion, uh, and basically how to save the city from the Riddler, which is very superhero movie esque. So I still like to say though, you know, you gotta suspend belief, belief sometimes, right? But I still like to say it is a very grounded movie. There's nothing amazing about it in terms of that. It feels very normal. I saw somebody, uh, not necessarily complain, but just kind of mention that the, the ending didn't feel very special or anything like that, right? It just felt like a conversation he was kind of comparing to the, the TDKRs and their endings. Those were fucking home runs. Uh, Batman Begins was, I think, founded, but those other two movies were pushing what movies probably were supposed to be doing uh, even with a massive budget at that point, you know, not like in terms of cinematography or CGI shit like that, but like just how grand those movies were and, and how they, you know, went and operated ideologically, ideologically, um, casting scope. I mean, it's all that stuff, um, themes, but like this movie is very tight. Uh, it does get into a lot of different sprawling, um, you know, genre kind of snippets as I, I said but 
a lot of what makes this a big movie isn't outward. It's kind of like how you interpret things. Like if you look at the whole mental conflict that Bruce Wayne has, I think that could be big if you wanted to be big. I mean, it could also be pretty simple. Like, hey, he's just young. He's like 20. I, I would say the Bruce Wayne we got here is supposed to be like around 25, if not younger. Um, and that Bruce Wayne is still very young mentally. Uh, he even touched on he didn't have, you know, parents growing up like that. So he didn't really kind of get the, uh, uh, he's around 30 years old. That's what they say. I, I mean, I would say mentally he's probably a little bit younger than that. Uh, he has mastered kind of some of the emotions of things, but even that becomes chipped away, uh, as you kind of learn more about his background and he learns about his background specifically. So it's just, it's very, um, very real. I think it feels very real. Uh, I don't have too many cons about this movie. I mean, I feel like the, um, the time was, I, I think it's what people, people are the most care about is the time. I think the time was fine. I didn't have any, really any moments where I could say, I just thought this should be shorter. Like, I, I, I don't know what you would cut out. Like, I think that's always the, the right response you'd have. Like, if someone says this movie should be uh, shorter, I always think, what should we cut out to make it shorter? I think the Selena Kyle part was fine. Introducing her was fine. You get to her kind of relationship with her friend. I thought that was fine. Uh, I think her scenes, every time she's on screen, it feels like it's pretty, you know, needed. I don't feel like there's anything that's just like, you could cut that out and be fine with it. Um... I can't really think of anything that you can cut out of this movie, to be honest with you. Like, I, I, it's three hours, but I feel like it's three hours of, like, real content. It's not, like, packed. It's not, um, you know, packed in, like, fluff. It's nothing like that on it. Um, the score, the score is great. I mean, it feels very haunting. It matches what you're trying to get out of the, at any given scene. And there's this motherfucker in the shadows. He's supposed to be coming. You hear, like, kind of like this almost thumping that, I guess, can mimic the, uh, heart of the, um, the person that's the criminal that's there in that scene, then that, that fits. Um, it, it really doesn't change to like many, uh, uplifting moments as far as the music goes. I mean, you have a couple of, I was supposed to be like a cool chase or a cool scene, some shit like that, that can kind of get very, um, uh, hectic and, and, um, action field. Sometimes like that, like what I think the, um, the penguin and a uh, Batman part, uh, scene, comes to my mind as far as a more action field uh moment that the music does match but for the most part i think it's very uh muted and uh complimentary it doesn't really go too loud and it's not there too often but i think when they do they do and i meant score really for that but when they do come to the actual soundtrack the songs they pick uh i think the nirvana songs that really really does do some good justice here um the casting or not the casting but the characters i thought the characters are fine too i mean i think that uh jim gordon was Jim Gordon. Um, he was supposed to be a little bit sharper of wit than, uh, well, not sharper of wit, but like a little bit more uh, introduced, like part of it, than um, than uh, the uh, the one we got uh, in the... Is this the same Alfred from the, the prior movie, or am I tripping? This wasn't the same Alfred, is it? Let me see. Fuck, hold up. Alfred Justice League. Andy Serkis is the main lead in the uh, the uh, Planet Eight. I just thought about it. He's the main lead in the Planet Eight. I was like, where the fuck did I see Andy Serkis at? Other than like the um, the Marvel movie he was in. I think it was uh, the second Captain America. But he was the main lead in. So and Matt Reeves directed that. That's funny. No, it, it was a different guy. Okay, it was a different uh, Alfred. So they, they casted Alfred again. Into, they, I think he recasted out everybody. I don't think there's any commonalities between this and the uh, Snyder Cut. Um, they went in a weird direction with that one, too, because they didn't go, like, they went, like, hot butler type thing. Uh, and this one is kind of, like, in between. I think this one's kind of in between of the old Alfred that you give the Christian Bale, who's, like, you know, possibly, I think, about 40 in that movie. And then the hot, quote-unquote, Alfred... Because that's supposed to be like a cooler movie. So they do a cooler Alfred. This is like an in-between of those two Alfreds. Uh, I like Alfred. Um, and it's just a tight casting. There's not really many people that matter, right? Like, it's literally uh, Penguin, Alfred, Falcone. Uh, Coulson is in there a little bit. I mean, he really doesn't matter too, too much. Like, for a weird creep, I guess he does his job. Um, yeah, Jim Gordon, uh, Riddler, Selena Kyle, Bruce Wayne. I mean, like, it's pretty much 
carried by about six or seven people. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and everybody else that you kind of see in there is just pretty, pretty uh, temporary, I think, in the grand scheme. But I thought the casting was fine. The, the, the casting was great out there, I thought, actually. Um, they, wait, what the fuck? They, they thought about having Dennis Villeneuve, Villeneuve that, that fucking dude would be Dune. They thought about having him be the, oh, the, the directing replacement. Oh, 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 shit. I, I'm going to talk about the fucking uh, Batman replacement. Because they had Affleck do directing, too. I'm going to say, whoa, holy shit. That would have been fucking crazy. Anyway, um, Robert Pattinson, this is like my first Robert Pattinson movie since uh, the last uh twilight movie i know he's been pretty much heralded for a decade um and he just i mean from what i understand from the movies he directed they were fantastic movies so he deserves that but i just never other than lighthouse never really was like i need to watch one of these movies uh but i definitely need to go back and watch some of those movies now because he's definitely progressed as an actor since i think what 2013 or whatever uh it's been like a decade so i had to check that shit out uh zoe kravitz i can't tell you like any movies i've seen zoe kravitz i know i've seen at least one that she's in but uh, she thought uh, she's fantastic. Um, I mean, her credit pedigree, her blood, I guess. I, I mean, she's, I don't know. She, she, I think Zoe Kravitz is that person. You just like, yeah, she's fucking like really good at what she does. She's fucking gorgeous. And she can also do other shit. I don't know. She's attractive. I don't know. She's hot. I don't know what to say. She's great at what she does. She's fucking Zoe Kravitz. Uh, is it moved? Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Dope. That's, that might be the last movie I've seen her in. Dope. I watched Mad Match that same year, but I can't remember what she did in that. Uh, I didn't watch Fantastic Beast. I she was Catwoman, Lego Batman, huh? Okay. Uh, obviously, I watched Spider Man into the Spider Verse, but she's not. You know. Um, <laughs> uh, she was in music videos too. Shout out to her. Um, let's see. The Riddler, I thought he was, he was cool. I mean, we didn't we got the look at Riddler, like the person, um, face to face more towards the back end, but the little snippets we got of him to that point I thought was great. Um just a crazy ass dude. I mean, like he you know, we have him likened um or, or kind of connected to um a certain other villain from the Batman uh if you don't watch the credits towards the end, I mean you can go watch it right now. But um, actually, it's not the credits. It's not the, the, the credits haven't come on yet. But some people might not have seen it, I guess. But the guy, the other pretty massive Batman villain, um, I think about him a lot when I see uh, Riddler, and I think about the Joking Phoenix Joker. Um, I look at that Riddler. The guy they had is James Gordon. I thought he was cool. Uh, I still I don't know how to put him in a like a description per se, but I thought he was fine. I, I thought he was cool, honestly. Um, he plays his, his role well, and like they kind of say, he has a, a larger, um, larger role in this. He's not the commissioner yet. He's kind of a, more of a, not, not a lapdog per se, but he's, he's a, a, a soldier. He's a foot soldier. And, uh, he has probably, he probably have more screen time in this than he had in like, I would say like ninety percent of the uh, the Batman trilogy, uh, the Bale one. Uh, Falcon, I thought Falcon was cool. He was a he looked like a mafia villain. Uh, you know, like you know, I thought everybody was fun in this. Uh, Colin Farrell as Penguin was fantastic. I mean, he felt like I think some of the bars kind of try. Like if you think it's supposed to be like a kind of a um, you know a, a real mobster dude. I, some of the lines felt like they were from like the seventies, but dated as fuck. Some of them were cool. He had he had a couple of quips, but um, I don't know if it's him being in a PG movie or what. But I, I didn't. I wasn't the biggest fan of the, the mouthpiece that he had. I like I like Falcon the way Falcon talked. I don't like the way Penguin talked. Uh, that's supposed to be pretty much the same line of work. So I didn't really like that. Uh, but I thought he was a good casting in, in general. I mean, he, he seemed okay. You know, he seemed okay. Penguin was just a hard role to get down, right? Because like Penguin was good to be conniving you have to be cunning you have to be a piece of shit you got to be an italiano kind of you also got to be like five four 
and not very intimidating. And it's just a hard role to get down perfectly, I felt like. Um, that's about it. I really don't have much else to say. Um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, I thought it was fine. I didn't think it was... Me, personally, I don't think it was 10 out of 10. Um... I mean, I would say that it's a movie that, like, you probably watch it a few more times and it becomes a lot be better, you know? Like, I think that there's some things you can appreciate, because there's a lot of references to movies in general. This is definitely, um, you know, a, a director that loves paying homage, and uh, he does a lot of that uh, throughout this movie. And me just reading the Wikipedia right now, like, I mean, I, I really do think that uh, a, lot of, a lot of things are probably become more uh, appreciative uh, if you got to watch multiple times. So I may, whenever it hits HBO Max or whatever the fuck it, it ends up at, I may watch it again. But uh, Vengeance. I, I do like, I would say to cl close out, I like that they tried to avoid making this, you know, making him Batman. As long as they can. Like, Batman is not what matters for like half the movie like half the movie is just this dude that's in a fucking like a crazy like almost in, in his own way a crazy motherfucker that just happens to be kind of dressed up um and he has money and he can kind of buy some crazy shit that allows him and it's not even it's not even the money part the money part doesn't matter because he doesn't really outside of the suit being protective and the kind of one major scene you see the batmobile it doesn't seem to be somebody that's particularly loaded in terms of his his weapons or anything like that it's very grounded in that again but he just seems like a normal motherfucker that's a, 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 trying to be a hero um for like half the movie and then he becomes from vengeance to batman you know <laughs> and when he becomes batman it's like okay this is a good this becomes a good almost in of itself an origin story for batman like this feels like matt reeves wanted to even allow us to be part of the origin story by having a movie set within the origin story. Like, this isn't... You don't need to see the parents die because the way it's conveyed is, like, we're damn near learning why they died themselves. Like, in almost every other Batman movie, the why they die doesn't ever matter. It's just some thug fucking put them down. I don't think I've... I, I mean, how many times have you seen any kind of media where it's, like, the why they died is massively important? Like that's the backdrop, of almost the entire progression for um for Robert Pattinson's character is the why his parents died. So it's not even an origin story; it's forming the origin, and then we go from there to seeing the dude. And that's rare. I mean, it's rare that you see a superhero because I mean, we all are supposed to we're all supposed to know why these superheroes are what they are. But at this point, it's become a thing where like it became amazing to just tell you origin stories do that for the first movie of a trilogy or however many movies. And then went from there to like, you should know the origin story. You know, that's like not a thing. Now you should know him. You should like, cause he's seen him a thousand fucking times. And now this movie flips that back on itself to be like, well, we don't want to restate the same tired Batman beginning, but we don't want to, for you to just insert your own narrative. So we'll just boom in between. And yeah, that's kind of where I ended off at. I thought it was a great movie. I feel bad giving that 8 out of 10 because it's like this movie, even on first watch, it's probably better than that. But it's like, I don't feel like this is like, I don't feel like it's like a 10 out of 10. Like, I feel like anybody giving that is like a little bit od -ing. But it's somewhere between those two, I, probably. I don't know if it's a 9. I don't know if it's an 8 and a, an eight and a half or 9 and a half. I probably wouldn't say 9 and a half. I, I don't know if I want to say 9 and a half. But um, if you said 9, like, I wouldn't be pissed. Like, I wouldn't be like, Oh, that's really ridiculous. Uh, like, okay, so just me looking at Wikipedia. Uh, on the review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes, the Batman holds an approval rating of 85%, the average rate of 7.7. Uh, they also did call it Super Noir. See, I knew that. I never watched a Noir movie, but I did. That's the uh, vibe I got from it. Four out of five is where I'm seeing a lot of this being at. That's that's where I'd have it at. Eight, 80%, maybe 85%. You could. If you really like some of the references and some of the, the kind of the, the subtext, okay, nine out of ten, maybe. But um, I think I'm I'm about at eight and a half. Um, they have a penguin series too. I think that should be pretty good. Uh, yeah, so that, that'll be about it. Um, I hope y'all enjoy. Uh.
Batman, Pat, Patterson and Reeves express interest in introducing Robin and featuring the Court of Owls, Calendar Man, and Mr. Freeze. That's another thing I think I said at some point in this, but I do like that they um, are trying to get like a lot of love to the uh, lesser villains because I mean, at most, Penguin is like a probably a, a B tier villain, and probably the closest you get away from the Simmons '80s, like closest like a maybe C tier type of guy. Um, and Mr. Freeze, I mean, was huge back in the day again, but like, for, I mean, he hasn't been in any Batman shit, I think, in this whole millennium. So, I mean, he's B-tier. He's not Joker. He's not, you know, whoever else you want to put out there. He's not Bane, I guess. But um, you could do good, good things like Mr. Freeze. You know, he's not as, I don't know. I actually don't know how like, the comic version of Mr. Freeze works, but I feel like he's maybe not as psychologically interesting as Penguin, but we'll see. Uh, I don't know who the fuck Core Owl of Tyler Man is. I guess we're going to learn ourselves. But uh, that's about it for me. Hope y'all enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed the whole sub my way. If you watched all of this, you probably didn't watch all of it. But I just wanted to kind of riff a bit. I mean, it's a three hour movie. You got to really get some thoughts out there, right? Like, But you know, maybe you want to watch all of it. I don't know. But I'm going to upload a raw. Hopefully, you have the volume down at some point in all of this. But if you didn't, I'm sorry for blowing your fucking speakers out. But uh, yeah, that's it for me. Peace.